Good morning, modern steaders. I was just about to say it's quiet on the homestead this morning, but then I heard the ducks. <laughs> I don't hear the boy goats yet. I'm sure they'll start in any minute. <sighs> nice brisk 20 degrees out this morning. You can feel the moisture in the air. That we'll be getting some snow in the next couple of days. Usually when you can feel that dampness in the air, you know weather's coming. Bam! That changes the look of the barn completely, having that side finished off on the front. Hear that? You goats ready for some hay? We're gonna feed you out in the pasture. So, I'll meet you over there. Come on, meet you over there. Goaty goats, you coming? Come on, peeps. You coming? Come on, Willow. Hey, it's over here. There you go. It's starting to get used to it. What are you doing, Hope? You're usually the first one out. Well, you know there's a bunch of hay there. You can share it. I've been really impressed with how well they've been eating the hay up off of the snow. They're eating the hay off the snow better than they eat it out of the hay feeder, making less of a mess and wasting less. Haha. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna keep it up, guys. Pluto, tan man. You ready for your feed? Be right there. Good morning. Oh, you're still looking pretty homely there, chicken. But your feathers are coming back. I'll feed you over there. You waiting for your water? There you go. You're pretty noisy drinkers, you know, right? Pretty cute, though. Let's go out to the 40, see what we can see, and we'll check the game camera. That's new. Right there. Somebody urinated on the old trail. Whew. I don't see any tracks, but they're in our trail with no fresh snow, so something came this way. Tracks right there, those are fresh. Can't make them out, definitely. Looks like a good sized paw, but, and they came from over there. Let's go this way. I liked it better when we got, kept getting a little bit of fresh snow. It's easier to track. Our sardines are right over here. Let's see if they picked up anything. Got some comments saying they didn't like the idea of using sardines. They didn't think it was a good bait. So if you have a better idea for a bait, leave it in the comments down below. I'm not seeing any fresh tracks. Sardines have not been touched. The game camera's right there. The reason we're going to take this in today, when I was setting it up, I noticed that right here, there's no cover over the eye. It's not sealed. So I don't know if, we, if it broke, if it's not made that way or what, but I don't want to leave it out here in the freezing rain. I don't know if you can see there. It's not, it's missing. So, maybe that's one reason why I haven't had great luck with this camera. Maybe it came that way. We got another camera coming. I think it should be here tomorrow at some point. So when it comes, we will set that this one back out after the rain and the new one.
I'm gonna leave the sardines out if you have a better idea for a bait to see what's been lurking around. Leave it in the comments down below. Let's pull this and we're gonna walk back to the other tracks and see if we can find out anything else about those tracks. So it seemed to me like those tracks came across the brook and further down here. Some trails here, but those are not that fresh. Trails, tracks there. I'm thinking it came from this way. Not seeing anything fresh. Let's go down a little bit further. Yeah, you can see where they broke through the water right here. That's a good sized paw track. Let's see if I can take some pictures. Oh, look at that. They're really showing up good on camera. I'll post those photos on Instagram. You can see right here they broke through the ice. Actually, it's kind of neat to see. They didn't. They just broke through the ice where their paws hit. They didn't crack all the ice like the deer did the other day. And that ice is not very thick. That ice is... Whoops! Ugh, not thick at all. Yeah, that ice is a quarter of an inch thick. So whatever animal that was didn't weigh much. So my guess is a fox or a coyote. The other game camera we get, we might have to set up down here. And then I just noticed this, there's other fresh tracks right here. So something ran across. So maybe that wasn't the predator. And there's more tracks here, bam, big paw tracks and they ran across here. Look at that. Let's see if I can get some of those. So this is where something else ran across. Yeek! And they're coming up to the homestead. And this is one of the reasons why we're down here because I'm assuming this is one of the areas they're coming in from. And you can see right here. Follow these tracks back up. It's got a tail. I don't know if you can see that tail drag right there. I'm seeing a tail drag. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's got a tail. It's got a tail drag in the deep snow. See it? And then, okay followed us, followed up over here, got on our trail, kept going up our trail, and then stopped and peed right there, <laughs> marked its territory. Keep an eye out to see if it gets off our track. So I'm not seeing where they left our trail. So I'm wondering if they went up and went onto the road somewhere. Because once we get this way, if they stayed on our trail, a lot of this is our dogs. I won't be able to tell where they went. I don't know if you guys heard all the squawking when we were doing the chores this morning, but that was coming out of the greenhouse chicken coop. It sounded like we had two girls squawking. That means they're laying eggs. So I wonder if one of the black copper morans laid eggs this morning. <laughs> one, did the olive egg layer lay? She usually lays right here. Nope. <laughs> two. Thank you, ladies. You both started laying on the same day. The olive egg layer has been laying pretty consistent 
pretty consistently lately. Oh, that's awesome. Two fresh black copper moran eggs. The eggs aren't that black or aren't that like dark yet, like a rich chocolate color yet. But the more they lay, the darker the eggs will get. So we'll be waiting to see how they turn out. We got our first black cop moran eggs this morning. Two of them, both at the same day. They'll get darker in color. Oh, cold. They are cold. Oh. I was out doing the chores and I was hearing squawking, squawking, oh, squawking. I was like, what the heck is all that racket? It was the two black cop morans laying their first eggs. That's so funny. Right? We've been lucky. We haven't gotten any big snowstorms yet here in the homestead, but I know they're coming. So we need to get the tractor ready. We had the battery die on us once this summer. It's the original battery in the Kubota, and once we get a good cold snap, I know that battery's not going to want to work, so we need to get the battery out and see if we can get a new one today. We need to get the lawnmower deck off, because we're not going to be mowing lawns for five, six months anyway. Try to get the tire chains on, and then we need to get the plow and the truck situated. She's not plowing very good right now, so we'll make a few adjustments on that after. Oh, we need to get the battery out of the Kubota. It went dead on me once this summer, and the battery is five, six years old, so it's time for a new one before the weather gets too cold. Gotta take it down to the battery shop and see if they can match it up to something. Bam. All right, called up the parts store. And they couldn't find one, but they said if I brought it in, they should be able to match it up. So, I'm not sure what's going to happen, or how easy it's going to be to get a battery for it. I don't want to go to the dealer. There's no numbers on the battery. I guess there's a part number. But there's not any, like, battery group number like what I'm used to for a car. <laughs> 2013, <sighs> October 2013 is when this battery was made. So this battery is over six years old. <sighs> it's not completely dead yet, but I know when it gets like 20 below zero, it's not gonna wanna work. So I gotta go run to the hardware store and pick up a new battery. Be right back. I told you I'd be right back. It took a little bit longer than I thought. It was kind of a pain for them to match up that battery. None of the numbers of the Kubota battery matched their book so they had to take all the batteries out and measure them up and compare them side by side and they had one that was close but the cold cranking amps weren't the same they were, they were like a hundred less crank cold cranking amps so we didn't want that battery this is a 450 cold cranking amp battery and that's what this one is 450 cold cranking amps i gave them a different core just in case this battery didn't work we'd still have the original one with the Kubota on hand so let's get this hooked up, get the Kubota running. Should fit right back in place and go in just as easy as the old one came out. I guess I should have paid attention more to see which way these terminals were pointing. Basically, we have just enough room for everything in there. Oof. That's a tight fit. Loosen up this terminal a bit. I don't know how well you can see in there. It's kind of dark. Spin it this way a little bit. That's better. It's kind of had some tension on the wire. I didn't like that. There we go. Nice. tractor start that strong in a long time. I guess it needed a new battery for a while. Oh, I'm glad we did it before it completely died. I 
I leave the mower deck on so much because it's kind of a pain to get off. And then I don't really have a great, or I haven't had a great place to store it. We're gonna put it in the carport or tractor port, I should say, up against the wall. Normally I have to find a place to keep it outside. So it's gonna be nice to have a place inside to store it this year. Bam. Take this part off right here. Oh. I should stay there. All right, so there's that. Now we have to get the PTO shaft disconnected. It's a quick connect fitting. Oh, there we go. So now I gotta raise up the PTO shaft, not the PTO shaft, the three point hitch part. This is a slip joint, so both sides are splined. Let's see. So when we're raising our deck up and down, the shaft needs to be able to grow and subtract, I guess you could call it. So that's what this is for. So we're gonna leave it off because it's just gonna fall off again. Bam. We'll leave it here till springtime. We'll do some maintenance before we put it back on the tractor. Or if we're looking for a project this winter, we can do some maintenance to it. We got new blades, so we can go through the deck this winter. Most of this in here is sand. We have like four or five sandbags in here for weight. sure what that is. Let's see, I wanna make sure they're facing the right direction. So we have little spikes on our chain. So this, this is backwards, we go flip it over. There we go. So let's leave this like this. It's not done yet. Let's get the other side hooked up and then we'll drive it around for a little bit and we'll get these tracks kind of centered. And I'm probably gonna need to get some bungee cords to go from here to there and tighten them up. I forgot about that. We used to have bungee cords, but I'm pretty sure I broke them all. The sunlight gets to them and just dry cracks when they end up breaking. So I'll have to pick up some more bungee cords later on. doing where are you <laughs> you down at the workshop yeah you need a hand i'll be right there we'll take a drive down to the workshop she needs a hand with something let's see what she's up to
Yeah, I loosened up a little bit. Make some adjustments after we give Gina a hand. Get that all adjusted. More. Anybody know what I'm making yet? All right, let's get these tightened up. Oh, we might just need. Hold on, oh, that is pretty loose. That's funny. You have it tight, and then you drive it, and it loosens up so much. If I remember correctly, I believe the statistics like you get a hundred percent more traction on ice with tire chains than without something crazy. That's pretty good. I think the biggest thing is we'll get some bungee cords and go around. Pretty crazy how much rougher the tractor rides with those chains back on there. It was riding pretty smooth. You can feel it. It's like doof, doof, doof. it's not it's not a smooth ride anymore. I'll forget all about it after a few times of driving it. Now we need to take care of the plow and the truck. So the plow on the truck has these little feet, they're pads, right here. Let me see if I can show them to you. Right here, and I have them adjusted so that this hits first before the blade of the plow. So in the first couple of snowstorms we have gravel, we're not digging in as much and digging the gr soft gravel that's not frozen with the blade of the, of the plow. And now that everything's frozen and we got snow on the ground, we can take those off because what's happening right now, I'm not pushing any snow because those are hitting before the blade. So if we're only getting like an inch or two of snow, I'm not pushing nothing. So we need to take them off. Ugh. They're frozen in place. Oh, oh, there we go. It's gonna say, oh, of course, everything's frozen right now. Bam. All right, let's do this. Let's see if we can get these are all done. No? Yes. So I'm going to do this. Bam. Bam. And then I'll know to take these washers off. And that's the height I like. If that makes sense. Because we'll be putting them back on either come springtime or if we get like a January thaw, we'll need them again. I think we got what, three or four? We got three of them. I guess we're gonna need two hands. If I undo that pin, it's gonna fall, and then I'll lose all my washers in the snow banks. Flip it. 
and then we know where to put them. Bam. Let's set these aside. Now we have a nice storage spot, even for these. Boom. Boom. I don't got to worry about losing them. I think that pretty much makes us ready for whatever winter throws at us. I'm not saying we want it, but we're ready for it. Hungry? Huh? Are you hungry? Come on. Pluto and Tanner stay over here. Got it, got it, got it, got it! Yeah. Got it, got it, got it, got Come on, goats! Got it, got it, got it, got it! Hope it opens. Hoppy! Got it! Got it, got it, got it, got it! Give him a good headbutt through the fence, Hope. Eat hay that bad? Nah. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it, got it. Little man's gonna do it. He's gonna run. 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 His girlfriend's out there eating hay. He's gotta get there. Run. Oh, little P's gonna go by you. Don't walk further away from the fence, they still come right up to them. Yeah. Come on, Buttercup. You're the last one, like yesterday. You can't come in with us today. How many? Uh, four. Whoa, two. Four, five. Woohoo! Pluto, get back over here. I like that number. Plus the two black copper moran eggs we got this morning. We haven't got one of those today. So that's seven today. Okay. Yes! Just checked the game camera card and there was nothing on it but photos of us out checking for the camera. That was it. Nothing exciting. I'm gonna have to go put it back out once this weather starts to clear up and then hopefully the new one comes in we can get them set up at the bolt time and then we'll have two cameras out back in the back 40 and we can see what's going on out there at night it's amazing the tracks we see but we haven't got any pictures of it yet but i'm glad we're ready for winter now I finally took the mower deck off that only took me what a month <laughs> oh it's one of the things i always seem to dread to do but we got it done we're ready and I'll tell you what, it was nice to get our first two black copper moran eggs this morning, guys. We've been waiting seven months for that. And that's one of the reasons why we're taking it so seriously to find out what's lurking around the homestead at night. Because you get a lot of time, energy, and effort into raising up these chickens before you get an egg. I mean, seven months. That's a long time to wait for your first egg. That's a lot of feed. It's a lot of time. But So that's why we're just trying to keep an eye on everything. Just reading a quote here. The pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. The optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. So true. Change the way you look at life 
and it will always come around. There's always something good. Just got to take a step back from the forest sometimes so you can see the trees. Thanks for coming along on our journey with us, guys. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.